Hello everyone, my name is Mary Margaret. If you're new here and if this is your second or even third time on my channel or maybe even more, welcome back. Thank you for being here. I don't know why you keep coming back because I'm the most sporadic and very unpredictable uploader ever. Um, and I try really hard to continue to knock out some videos every now and then, but with school and work, it's kind of difficult to do. But today I just felt like I needed to film something. And I had something I've been wanting to film since probably March of this year. And that is a video that you can tell by the title. It's gonna just be all about Joan Didion. I also have kind of a proposal for you guys. So if you will comment below to my question that I will sort of give you at the end of the video, I would appreciate it. So in today's video, as I said, I'm going to be talking about Joan Didion. And this is because I've had several of you actually specifically ask that I talk more about her because you were interested in reading some of her work and you weren't really sure where to start. Now, I am by no means a Joan Didion expert, and this is because I actually only recently discovered how much I loved her work, I would say about a year and a half ago, almost two years now. And so I actually only have one physical copy of one of her books. And then the other one I have here to show you in just a moment is actually my twins copy that I borrowed. So thank you, Hunter. In Joan Didion's work, you have a really wide range of different things that you can read from her. And that's because she has been an active writer for decades and decades. And um, one of the things that I think is so cool about her is that you can find different things to read from her pretty much to suit whatever mood that you are in. Although I will add the disclaimer, her work is not the most uplifting. So if you're not wanting to read something that's a little gritty, a little depressing probably, and pretty dark, I would not recommend reading Joan Didion from what I have read of her work. That might be, you know, something that you would disagree with. If you have read something of hers that's more uplifting, I would be curious to know. <laughs> but um, I personally enjoy reading a lot of kind of dark, gritty, thought-provoking things, and so I really enjoy her work. The very first book that I read by Joan Didion was, and I have it in my lap, so I'm gonna put my coffee cup down so that I don't spill it on said book, because this is my twin's copy, so do not wanna mess up his book. But it is called South and West. This book is actually quite small. As you can see, it's not very long. The text is the trademark kind of Joan Didion font that you see on the cover here as well. And it's very easy to read. It's actually like 120 something pages. Very, very short. This particular book I actually read on a road trip through the Southeast when I was going to visit my grandparents in Mississippi. So if you can ever coincide a road trip through the South, um, while you're reading this, I would recommend it because it adds a whole lot of atmosphere to it. Although in any of Joan Didion's writing, especially the nonfiction kind of essay style writing that she did or does, um, you can't really lose atmosphere. She has a very, very descriptive way of writing that's just so distinctly her own. Um, and so you don't really need to have that atmosphere, but I will say being on a road trip through the South while reading this book was really quite an experience for me and I plowed through this book. In this you have actually a compilation of notes that she made while she was going on a road trip through the south and it's interesting it's called the south and or south and west because in this it's primarily focused on the south. I think west was probably like 20 pages of the book if that. But she really muses on the different things that she encounters through her road trip and if I remember correctly she was driving through either in the 1960s or 1970s. So it's definitely kind of like a time capsule in that way. She describes things like motels, she describes things like the sort of oppressive heat and humidity of New Orleans, you know, different things like that. And so this is a really good book if you're missing traveling right now, I will say. It would be a really fantastic way to be an armchair traveler. If you're not aware, Joan Didion is um, one of those people who primarily writes, I think, her strongest work in her nonfiction writing. So a lot of it had to do with reporting on different things that she would observe, whether it was a social situation, whether it was a historical event, you know, or it could just be on a particular emotion or idea. She didn't have any sort of boundaries really with what she wrote about and so it's really difficult to describe 
what she wrote. <laughs> so that's why I'm kind of, this is a scatter video. I'm giving you a uh, heads up about that right now. With her South and West, I think one of my favorite things about it is that it really does capture the South, especially at this time, I imagine. I mean, I wasn't alive in the 1960s or 70s, so I can't say, but it really does seem very accurate for what I know and have experienced of the South, and it captures it in a very honest and real way without being particularly um, opinionated, I guess, because she doesn't really have that personal experience of having grown up in the South, so she doesn't really understand um, how things are because she grew up in it. It's more an outsider's perspective, but it's not a snobby perspective, I guess is how I would say, because a lot of times people can come to a different part of the United States that they're not like familiar with and have a really kind of judgmental way of perceiving it. And I think that she's very honest, as I said, and very real without having that perspective. So this is a really good place to start if you're trying to kind of get familiar with Joan Didion's writing style and kind of how she describes things without going in too deep at the very start. Because the next book I'm going to talk about of hers is one that is like jumping into the deep end, whereas this is more like the three feet area of a swimming pool. So that's the best way I can think of to describe it. So I wanted to read a quote from South and West that I have, I actually used to, and I really should be still doing this, but I used to keep a reading journal where I would copy quotes from what I was reading into the journal. And I was really good about that for a while, but then I got to the point where I was actually reading a lot more than at the point when I was using this journal. And so the problem was um, that I ended up copying way too much stuff and so I felt like I was spending more time copying than actually reading so I abandoned it but at the point that I was doing it I copied a lot of quotes from South and West and so I wanted to read this one because this is just one of the descriptions in South and West that I really just I loved it so as someone who's been to New Orleans several times I find this to be a really great description and um, it's not me being negative about New Orleans. I think it's kind of part of the magical gothic quality to New Orleans. I just think it's a really good description. The place is physically dark. Dark like the negative of a photograph. Dark like an x-ray. The atmosphere absorbs its own light, never reflects light, but sucks it until random objects glow with a morbid luminescence. The crypts above ground dominate certain vistas. In the hypnotic liquidity of the atmosphere, all motion slows into choreography. All people on the street move as if suspended in a precarious emulsion, and there seems only a technical distinction between the quick and the dead." So yes, um, it's, it's a really, uh, I just love her writing. I love the way that she writes so much. So whereas South and West is more of a notebook of ideas that are just kind of strung together a little bit chaotically, a bit randomly, because it wasn't originally really made for publication, um, the next book I'm going to talk about is probably her best known book, and it was actually turned into a play. And this is the one that really just is a gut punch. It is a very difficult book to read, but I think it's an incredibly important one. Um, for a lot of different reasons. This one is more of a memoir than anything else, but it's also a story of her personal experiences with grief. Um, she has another book that covers similar themes, but in a completely different perspective. So if you aren't familiar with what happens in the book, I really hate to talk about it too much in depth because I think it takes away from experiencing everything with Joan Didion as you read it. But um, I'll tell you kind of briefly what this covers. So this is the year of magical thinking. I feel like pretty much almost everyone has at least seen this cover somewhere before because this is a very, very famous book. I actually don't remember what year it was published. So let me double check that for you. Let's see, 2005. So it was published in 2005. This is one that I read last summer and I could have probably read it pretty quickly because it is, like South and West, pretty short. Not quite as short as South and West. This one is actually 227 pages. But it's one that I personally needed to space out a lot in how I read it because, as I said, it's a gut punch. It's very heavy, 
it's very difficult to read because of the subject matter. So if you look on the back of this copy, and in most editions I've seen of this particular book, you will see a picture of Joan Didion at her home in Malibu with her husband, John Gregory Dunn, and her daughter, Quintana. Um, this is a really heartbreaking picture for them to have included on the back because in this book you find out about pretty much essentially I think within the first chapter the sudden death of Joan Didion's husband John Gregory Dunn and it was in the midst of a very difficult situation already that this took place and so this book really is all about Joan Didion trying to understand and come to terms with her grief through writing because as I've said, you know, she wrote and has written for decades and decades and decades. So that's kind of how she comes to terms with anything in her life from what I can gather is by reading what she's written about it. And so in this book, we have these really raw, very, very personal stories about how she felt, what was going on in her mind really how she responded personally to grief and one of the really interesting points that she mentions in this book is how there is very little literature about grief which doesn't make any sense because we all have to deal with grief in our lifetimes it's kind of one of those things that you cannot do without it's not something that you can miss out on and so she said that she felt very compelled to share her experience and hopefully that it would help others and as someone at last summer, I had never really experienced grief to the extent that she did. And I, I still wouldn't say I did or have. Um, I don't really think you can compare levels of grief per se. But um, having lost some really important people recently in my life, I can say that this book, having had this in my mind um, by that point in my life, was actually incredibly helpful for me. And I think... As difficult as it is to read, it's a really important book to read and it's a very powerful one. And it just, yeah, <laughs> it's beautifully written. It has some really important themes and philosophical ideas about a lot of really, um, I would say, universal experiences. And as with all of her writing, I just was mesmerized by it. I would highly recommend this to anyone, but as I said, you know, of the two that I've talked about thus far, you know, this one here and then South and West that I have over there, I would say, you know, just be wary that this is very heavy content, especially considering this year. But I think for me personally, it's the kind of thing that actually makes me feel better. Um, and it's so beautifully written that even if you do not plan to read it this year, you know, if you decide to wait till a kind of I don't know, a better time of life. I would say this is one of the most important books that I've ever read in my life um, and really sort of solidified my opinion that Didion was one of my favorite writers, which is not something that I say about very many authors. I'm pretty picky. So um, that really made it to where I was like, okay, I need to read everything she's ever written. And I'm on the path of doing just that. It's just going to take me a while because she's written a lot of stuff. So the next book I wanted to talk about by Joan Didion that I actually just finished reading finally a couple of weeks ago. You know, I was reading it earlier this year, but it took me a while to finish it because of school and work and life, is The White Album, which is a compilation of essays from the 1960s. So one of the things that I loved the most about The White Album is that this collection of essays I found to be particularly compelling, which I would say compelling is just kind of a, a given with Didion's work, in my opinion anyway, but the way that it's written is so fascinating because it, it feels very much like South and West, like a time capsule, because she describes everything that she experienced, everything that she observed in such a really fascinating way that it really does feel like I'm actually there experiencing it with her. She talks about the music scene in the 1960s in San Francisco. She talks about her encounters with Janis Joplin, the band The Doors. She talks about Malibu. She talks about, you know, just so many different things. It's really difficult to talk about everything that she discussed in the essay collection and I think that's one of the ways that it's so interesting is because if one essay is not something that's interesting to you then you can just 
rest assured that the next one will probably interest you. In particular, I found her essays about Hawaii to be really interesting because I've been to Hawaii before. Um, and so it was really interesting for me to read about her experiences there with her family when she was visiting so long ago compared to when I went, which was about five years ago, which is crazy to think about, in particular on the island Oahu. And so reading about that was really interesting as well. And she talks about her book tour that she went on with Quintana. And just in general, I, I really, really enjoyed this essay collection. So I plan to read more of those in the very near future. In terms of her other books, um, if you are interested more along the lines in her memoirs, then you might want to check out another one, which is called Blue Nights as well. This one is about her coming to terms with losing her daughter Quintana, um, which is just heartbreaking in and of itself, which is why I have not read it yet, because the year of magical thinking broke me. So I am still recovering and I want to read Blue Nights, but I think it's probably going to be something where I'm going to need to wait to read it just a little bit longer. I'm really looking forward to reading some of her novels in the near future, you know, something like Play It As It Lays, or it could be, you know, um, something more along the lines of her book Run River, which is her first novel, I believe. Um, and so what I wanted to say is once you have researched her more, if you are not familiar with her work, I would really be interested to know if any of you are interested in buddy reading with me or even just having a little bit of a Didion book club where we read one of her books. And if that is something you are interested in doing, please comment down below for me and I will see if we can connect in some way to do that. Um, I don't know that I can do it in the next month or two, but I'm thinking either December or January would be a really great time to do that. And I would just love to talk about her with you guys. So if you are interested, please let me know. I would love to do that. If you are wanting to learn more about her, I'm going to include some links below that explain more about her in a much more eloquent and organized fashion than I have just done. I just wanted to talk about my personal encounters with her writing thus far. There are so many amazing resources for learning more about her and one that I would recommend is actually on Netflix right now. So it's called The Center Will Not Hold and it is a documentary that I believe was actually either directed or produced by her nephew and we get to actually see all these interviews with her pretty recently um, and then it tells a lot about who she was, who she is, what she has experienced in her life and you get to become more acquainted with her as a person outside of her writing although her writing is interspersed throughout the documentary which I think is a really good way to get introduced to her work. Hopefully you can see me still. I had to re configure my camera because it died while I was in the middle of talking. So that means I've probably been talking for too long, but hopefully you have found something of interest in this video. If you are a Joan Didion fan, or if you're not, please comment down below and tell me your thoughts. And if you have any recommendations about which books of hers or which of her writing I should read next, um, or just any of your general thoughts, I would love to hear. And as I said, if you are interested in joining me in kind of having a book club of Didion reading, I would absolutely love that. So please let me know in the comments below or you can just message me on here. I think I will be able to check my email um, and see that. So I would really love to hear your thoughts. And like I said, I apologize that this is kind of all over the place, but I, when I get interested in what I'm talking about, I tend to kind of have a bit of a difficult um, way of explaining it. And it's because my brain is not very linear at all. So I kind of go all over the place just a little bit so I apologize if that was the case and it was difficult to follow along but if you are interested in reading her work after watching this or if you are already interested in her and have been really kind of enjoying her writing for a while now I would love to hear about that too and I just want to talk about it so yeah um, hopefully I will be posting another video soon I've been finishing a lot of books recently so I'm excited to talk about those books with you and to share my thoughts about them. So I will be looking forward to doing that soon. I hope you guys are all having a great start to October and I will see you in the next video. Bye!